Let's talk about this NAR lawsuit that's going on that's set to go to trial to start trials in October. And I cannot even believe that it made it this far. It's an antitrust, Sherman Antitrust lawsuit, which is about a you know group of homeowners that are doing a clash action lawsuit against some of the biggest brokerages out there, Keller Williams, Remax, to name a few. And basically they're saying, hey, you guys owe us $4 billion because you've got the buyer agent commission being paid by the seller. And that's not right. You know, the, the, the buyer's agent should not be paid by the seller. And so they're going out there and saying that, um, you know, that the, the buyer agent commission needs to be reimbursed back to the sellers. And this is a, to me, just a off the wall argument. And I believe it's just a, uh, just something that, you know, you got these people that are trying to make a case. I don't know. Maybe they legitimately believe that they're owed some um, some some compensation here for this. Maybe they honestly, legitimately believe that in their mind. Um, but there is a chance, and I think this is maybe even a greater possibility, that it's just people looking up for somehow to make some money. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. And how a judge is letting this through um, blows my mind. Because when we go out and we get a listing, you know, let's say we take the listing for 6%. We take the listing for 6%, which is negotiable, by the way. The seller can negotiate whatever commission they want. And if they want to go, you know, get a 4% commission from Redfin or, you know, one of these, you know, really low uh, commission brokerages, they can do so. They can also sell it by owner. There's a lot of different options. They can do so many different things when it comes to this. Commissions are not set um, in stone. They are 100% negotiable. And so that that needs to be made really clear, which is really clear, I believe. But the general public, you know, they're just they they just think real estate agents make um, all this money for basically doing nothing. That's the general consensus of you know we're like real estate agents are, are above car salesmen in terms of you know people that they feel are you know snaky you know snake oil salesmen uh, type uh, salespeople you know that industry. It's so crazy because it's not; it's nowhere near the truth. Um, real estate agents are incredibly hardworking people that are paid what the market, you know, says that they're worth. This is market value. What we're getting paid is market value. Um, if we were worth less, then we would get less. The market doesn't lie, ladies and gentlemen. It's like when you put a house for sale. If it doesn't sell, it's chances are it's overpriced. Um, if you get multiple offers in an hour, chances are it was underpriced. So the market doesn't lie, and we need to listen to the market. And what the market's telling us is that we're worth 6%. You know, some markets are different. Some markets, you know, we get five most of the time, so, you know, about half and half, five or six, 50-50. Sometimes we go a little below five to make a deal work, um, but that's kind of the standard, and people are more than happy to pay that. Uh, because they know what we go through, and they don't want to have to go through what we go through to get their property sold. So they're hiring us just as they would a contractor to roof their house, or a plumber, or even a lawyer to handle a court case. Um, you know, whatever it is, we are a professional that handles that juggles so much during the transaction to hold everything together for our clients and make sure their best interest is is there and that they get the. The smoothest, uh, the smoothest perspective of the transaction. We kind of handle all the bumpy stuff. So, nevertheless, let's say you go out there and get a, a listing for six percent on that listing agreement. At least in my area, we have on the listing agreement where we mark how much out of that six percent we're going to pay the buyer's agent. If in fact a buyer agent uh, or a buyer comes along that's represented by another real estate agent. We're going to pay them out of that 6%. If we represent the buyer as well as a transaction broker or however we represent them, if we bring the buyer and there's not another agent involved, then we're going to get the full 6%. And so you kind of look at this like a, almost like a, a, a contract, like subcontracting, you know, whereas, you know, a guy will go and sell a, a job to roof a house right, for a certain price, and then he will pay a subcontractor to actually go out and do the work uh, for a, a lower price, and he keeps the profit. It's really the same thing, in essence, when you think about it, um, but the difference in this and that is the fact that we're not subcontracting to someone who's doing all the work like the guy does when he sells a roof. 
we're still representing the seller and doing a lot. We're doing 50% of the transaction. And that's a whole nother conversation. When a buyer comes in and we represent both sides or there's no other agent involved, we're doing twice the work now because we're representing the, you know, representing the seller and we're helping the buyer and we're making sure the buyer's taking all the steps that they need to, to close the deal as well and helping them through those steps. So we're doing twice the work. That's something that isn't really talked about a lot either. A seller, you know, hires us to sell a property. They're like, oh, well, if you sell it yourself, you know, uh, we're going to do 3%. We're going to do lower than the 6%. You know, and that's fine. I do those deals all the time where I take less if I represent both sides. I'm perfectly fine with that. But the fact of the matter is you are doing twice the work in those scenarios. But, you know, let's break all this down. Number one, the commission is completely negotiable. You know, right off the jump, if you want to pay less, pay me less, right? If you think you can get it done, you know, at this level of service cheaper, you know, go for it. Be my guest. Um, and then on top of that, it's 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 disclosed right there in the listing agreement that I'm going to pay the buyer agent this much if, in fact, the buyer has their own agent that's representing them, which, by the way, is a very good thing to have a buyer's agent representing them on the transaction, and so I just think this is kind of crazy for them to come out and, and say it like this because the seller's willing to pay X amount um, to an agent to, to get their house sold. What that agent does with that money, if they need to pay out to, to, to you know, allow the buyer to have their own representation. I mean, listen, when you really break it all down, it's almost like the listing agent is paying the buyer's uh, agent commission, not the seller. The seller already agreed to, to, to list it for 6%. You know, they've agreed to pay a commission to the listing agent regardless. And by the listing agent going out and paying, they're really the ones paying, the buyer agent, the listing agent makes less money. Not the seller in that situation. Seller makes the same amount of money. They're paying 6% regardless, right? The listing agent is actually the one losing because they're giving half the money up to a buyer agent. This whole argument is wild. But let's let's think about this. You know, in other countries like Australia and in Europe, there's no buyer agents. They don't have buyer agents. And, you know, they go out and list properties and the buyers are unrepresented in most cases. What good is that? What? I mean, that to me, um, that's not really great for anybody, for the buyer especially. But then again, for the seller, because you have this unrepresented buyer that, you know, may make some decisions they wouldn't have made if they would have had counsel. It just... It doesn't make sense if that's the direction that they're going in. Again, I think this could possibly be just a way for some people to make billions of dollars. But um, if this were to go through, which I think chances are probably zilch, but I would have thought it would have been zilch to get this far. If it does go through and say we do turn into a country where there are no buyer's agents, I mean, I mean, that would flip everything upside down. Everything would change. Commission structures would change. But my question would be, is if that happened, you know, would we still have buyer's agents? Um, and would they just get paid from a different source? Would it still technically be, would it technically be someone other than the seller, but actually behind the scenes, it's actually the seller? It, it, like, in other words, you know, will we have new lending regulations that allows uh, for the buyer agent commission to be figured into the loan? Right. That's something that could happen where, you know, the buyer agent now gets paid and it looks like it's coming from, you know, out of the closing costs or something. But it's it's really technically probably coming from the seller because, you know, the, the buyer's paying more. Listen, <laughs> the whole thing is wild and it's something to watch. I don't think it's anything to worry about. I think it's going to be very interesting. But whatever happens, let's just say worst case scenario. Remember what I always say. Worst case scenario, imagine what that is. Imagine yourself crushing it during that worst case scenario. And then if worst case scenario doesn't happen, you're really crushing it. So let's just say worst case scenario, buyer agents go away, right? Buyer agents go away. And let's say commission comes down on the listing side too. Because, you know, for whatever reason, let's say it goes down to 3% total on the listing side. I mean, this is like out there in space, you know, this is alien talk, thinking that that could possibly happen, but let's just say that's very worst case scenario. Okay, let me go out here and be the greatest listing agent ever known to mankind, right? I'm going to go out here and list 
properties, which is what I focus on anyway and what everyone should be focused on. But I know there's a lot of people who are strictly buyer's agents. That's okay. You know, you, you, listen, in that worst case scenario, I mean, I believe we live in a world where buyers are still represented. Okay, so let me just make that clear. But in the worst case that buyers aren't represented for whatever reason, you have to be flexible. You have to be uh, agile. You have to be willing to say, okay, that this is what it is now. How can I fit into this equation and make the very best out of this situation and go out here and crush it? You know, and honestly, when you look at this, listing agents, I don't see anywhere in the mix where listing agents are going away, right? So listen, why don't you take the time for the next 12 months to become the most amazing listing agent that you can possibly be. Develop those skills now. And guess what happens? Even if worst case scenario doesn't happen, right, and everything stays the same, now you're still the most amazing listing agent out there. And so that's what I think you guys need to focus on. Um, You know, if you're a buyer agent, then I think you should, um, you know, transition into being a listing agent and not just a listing agent, real estate agent. You know, you help anyone buy and sell real estate. If they want to buy, great. If they want to sell, great. Um, That's the name of the game. For me, I never classify myself as a listing or a buyer agent. I'm a real estate agent who is here to help anyone buy and sell real estate. So anyway, with that, I'll let you guys get back to the rest of your day. I enjoy talking about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm going to put a video right here for you um, to watch. And uh, if there's anything else I could do for you, please let me know. Talk to you guys soon. I want to. I want to. Look. I 35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. 